Well, guys, blessing and peace on you guys. And welcome, welcome, welcome. It is uh, March the 27th here in the year 2024. I'm Troy Fru I'm Troy Brewer. And uh, I nearly said Troy Frewer. Uh, yeah, I forgot who I was for a minute. Working through some technical difficulties, a little bit stressful. I've got it, though. I'm here. Guys, blessing and peace on you. Welcome, guys, to this episode of The Pulse. And today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the, um, well, about the bridge collapse. And I'm actually going to be asking my guest about that here within the next few minutes because Alan Dio is going to be joining me. And he's going to be joining me from parts unknown in the backwoods of some hillbilly part of America. I'm coming to you from the very um, cosmopolitan area of Glen Rose, Texas. And I'm happy that you guys are joining me here today. I see that there's lots of people from all over the planet that are joining us right now. And I want to say hello to Sarah Spencer and Pablo, how in the world you are, Mona. It's good to see you, Sherry Morgan, Robin Day, Debbie Smith, Tanya Gaston. My goodness, my goodness. Thank you guys for joining us. You know, one of the things that's going to happen today in about 30 minutes from now is we're going to be shutting down across all of our social media platforms. And we're actually going to be um, going behind the veil at ODX.TV. So if you haven't yet signed up for that, man, I want to encourage you guys to do that because you're going to want to hear the back behind the scenes things that would otherwise might get us censored and man we do not like to be censored and so it's like all right well we'll just put a whole bunch of this over on uh odx.tv so guys today i have a very special guest that's with me and i'm just going to jump right off into this and this guy is a very good friend of mine i've known him for a couple of years we've done some conferences together he's been out to my house he's been out to my ranch he's been out to my church and he's really one of my best friends that I have in ministry. Hello, Brother Alan DeDio. How are you, sir? Man, I'm so excited to be on here with you. A lot to talk about prophetically that's happened, that is happening right now. And I got to tell you, thank you for what you do. Your channel is one of the places I go. I want to see what you're saying. I want to see what you're preaching to know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So thank you so much for you and for your audience for being a hub for this kind of prophetic intelligence. Well, thanks, man. Well, thank you. You know, actually, man, you're the one that taught me into it. So I want to give you credit where credit <laughs> is due. Uh, you've really coached me a lot here over the past couple of years, and you've really been a good friend of me, and you've helped me out a whole lot, uh, Brother Allen. And um, man, your your encounter today stuff is craziness. And uh, man, you're just killing it, and your team is killing it, and you guys are blowing it out of the water, and I'm just so grateful for you. So thank you so much, man. Well, thank you. We feel the same way. The 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 excellence in which you and your team operate. Everyone watching know, needs to know that when you sow into this ministry, they are squeezing every soul they possibly can out of every single penny uh, to get lives changed through the power of the Word of God and through all the messages that are being preached through this ministry and the lives that are being changed. So thank you again. Well, so you know I just got back from uh, South Africa and from Uganda and from Qatar the day before yesterday. How to you go know about that trip? Yeah, oh man, it was good. It was crazy good. Um, man, we got to see our latest rescued kids, and man, oh gosh, Alan, there's this 15 year old little girl that I love so much, and she spent about a half a day with me, and she has a one year old baby, and we rescued her, and uh, our teams there are just so amazing. I've got, I'm like still on the other side of the world as far as my you know my jet lag goes, but wow. I'm. I'm actually just blown away. I'm actually just absolutely blown away at the effectiveness of our teams over there, how hard they work and the difference that we're making. I saw all of our baby rescue homes. And then this other crazy cool thing happened. I announced it yesterday uh, here and uh, told everybody I got together with some big time military guys and some security teams that I work with that travel with me all over the world and they do security for me. And um, they're doing a special operation in an African nation that I cannot mention yet. And uh, a specific group of Islamic terrorists uh, went into this part of the world and they they surrounded an entire village. They, they murdered uh, hundreds and hundreds of people. And then he hauled off over 500 women and children into Islamic slavery. And we are working hard literally with military teams and with hostage negotiation teams and with all kinds of different ways to see how many of those 500 people that were, we can actually get back. Do you know anything about that? Have I talked to you about that yet? I think we've talked about it briefly, but it's amazing to me the connections that you have 
um, and that you must have in order to accomplish the work that you're doing. That's why I wanted I wanted to hear what you had to say about the bridge collapse because you have so many connections with people deep within intelligence, and you're so mm. familiar with a lot of these security operations. Uh, I, I was interested to know what you've been hearing about this bridge collapse. <laughs> well. For one thing, I've been hearing God speak prophetically through this thing, and outside of the all the different ideas of what could have happened, why it happened, the timing of it happening, and those kinds of things that are going on in the natural, um, but there, there's a lot of eyes, a lot of suspicious eyes that are on that, I should say, and I think that we'll talk more about that behind, uh, behind the veil, Good. but I would be interested in hearing what you have to say as well, but, but hear me say this, Alan, if you had a dream, and if the dream was... There was a guy by the name of Francis Scott Key who wrote the the national anthem, and the national anthem is, is the flag still standing? Is the flag still standing? Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave, right? Um, and then if that was a bridge, and if that happened within 100 yards of where that entire event happened, and if it fell, if it collapsed, and if it fell 180 feet, specifically the number 180 is attached to this. You know what 180 is? It's the turnaround. It's the change of the momentum. It's, hey, you were going one way. Now you're going another way. And if it collapsed because a cargo ship um, was supposed to be piloted, but it was not being piloted, and therefore lost its power and hit a pillar, would you know what that meant? Hmm. And I want to just tell you, it just spells out. And I want guys, it's it's not good. And here at this this time of Easter week, and as we gear up towards Resurrection Sunday, and there being a blood moon that happened a week ago, there is go, or I should say on Monday, there's going to be a solar eclipse that happens 14 days after that. On the and then as on the same exact day as we enter into sunrise, we go into the first in Nissan, which is Passover. And then right smack dab in the middle of all that is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of this, we have this tremendous event where God wow. said, okay, if, if you're going to pay attention to all this, what is this? And I want to tell you, it speaks highly. It, it is such a prophetic voice of this is what happens when you are no longer piloted, when there's no longer a pilot, a pilot ship. And you know what's going to happen? You lose your power and you hit the pillar. Hitting wow. a pillar is a really big prophetic symbol. You know, Princess Diana hit a pillar, and she she hit the thirteenth pillar in a in a uh, tunnel that is six hundred sixty six feet long, and the speedometer was stuck on the number one twenty, and she had just left royalty to marry an Egyptian. I mean, if that was a dream, what would it mean? I mean, the prophetic type is so profound to me. Um, and this is the same type picture, and it is disastrous, and it is tragic. And I want to tell you, man, the church had better had better get really good at being the church because America cannot make it without the church. Yeah, it's time to wake up. I'm so glad behind the veil we can talk about this because it really is an urgent wake up call for the body of Christ right now, and we need to be paying attention. We sure do. So, guys, if if you're not a part of stage two or 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 a stage three or a lifetime participant at odx.tv, guys, you're going to miss out on this talk that we're going to have. And uh, this guy is one of the best per persons to talk to on the planet Earth. I'm telling you, he is a 50-pound head. He's smart. Now, look, he's not much to look at, <laughs> but he's brilliant. The brother is brilliant. <laughs> and so anyway, and he's actually a really good friend of mine. We're going to have a good time once we do that. I also want to say that I was, I was talking about this special event, this special rescue, uh, Brother Allen, that we're doing in Africa, and we're trying to raise a bunch of money for this thing. And guys, honestly, uh, Brother Allen, I, you know, like, how much is it going to cost? I don't know. Right. I, I really don't know how much it's going to cost because I don't know how many we're going to be able to rescue and I don't know what it's gonna what what the setup is gonna be cost is gonna cost, and I don't know for how long we're gonna have to support them. We always just have a we always just have a yes in our spirit, and we say yes, and then we move forward, and we just say we're in all the way. And so, I am I am guessing that the setup for as many as I can imagine um, is going to be somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars is what I'm imagining. Uh, just sending the team over there that are actually have boots on the ground right now and are doing the work and it is dangerous work. And it is, you have to be highly professional to be able to take these monsters on 
and to be able to do the things that they're doing. And I'm so glad to be hooked up with teams of security forces like this all over the planet. But that just 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 the tickets and moving the stuff over was fifty thousand dollars. And we paid that last week. It's already paid. And now I'm asking people to step up and to help me. And before we get off into this, I want to throw this at you and tell you that we have a for anybody that wants to give and say, yeah, I want to help you free boys and girls out of sexual slavery, including the over 100 kids that are eight years old and younger that these Islamic terrorists have hauled off and they are now held hostage. They are now slaves right this second. Um, if you want to help me with a gift of one hundred dollars or more. We have this really cool uh, thing that we want to that we just released yesterday. It's the first time I'd ever seen it was yesterday, and it is uh, Pastor Allen. We come up with this really cool Bible study game, and so we use a play and a play and pray cube. And I don't know if you know what that is, but it's this multi sided cube. It's a wooden cube. You throw it out, and it gives you this prophetic declaration in these scriptures. And then you look those things up, and then you write down what your prophetic declaration is for your family or your friends or the people that you're actually praying for in the midst of it. And we put this thing together, and I think that we have a picture of it, or I think that Connie has one on set or something like that. Do you guys have any of that? Yes, we have it here on set, and it's the Easter yeah. bundle graphic from, from yesterday. But what it is is that you get together with your family. For the gift of $100, you'll get just the um, just the game. Mm -hmm. But if you— um, give a thousand dollars or more you get the entire yeah, we'll, bundle which you see yeah. in the the graphic but here the game it comes with the instructions and it's you and your family sitting um sitting together and you you're all praying together you're writing declarations you're writing prophetic words for each other mm -hmm. everyone in the family or in the group gets a chance to go around and, and roll the prayer cube and go to the scriptures and write the declarations and share them with each other and then you get these really cool cards and it comes in this super cute little jar where you get to write those things down. And then you want to put them back in here so that you can revisit throughout the year as a family, as friends and see the Lord answer those things. And we also encourage you afterwards to take communion. So it comes with the communion elements. And we also encourage you as a family to anoint your house. So it comes with anointing oil. It's really um, it, it's really it, we really wanted to put something together for a family where you can um, go after the kingdom and go after the prophetic in a, as a family and in a fun way. So we're super excited about it. Okay, so if you give a gift of one hundred dollars or more, this will be my gift back to you. It's free. I want to give that to you. And then if you give a gift of a thousand dollars or more, and if you want to help me raise this first three hundred thousand dollars to help me rescue this at least five hundred people that we are going after, well, guys, we've never done anything like this before. Uh, you know, we've rescued over ten thousand kids out of sexual slavery from all over the world, but this this is they are literally with a a specific world famous terroristic group and we have next level people boots on the ground working at different levels to actually get these people and that's really all i can say about it until these until the operations are over with because it's hairy guys this is the job of the body of king jesus this is the role that we have and if you want to give a thousand dollars or more i'll send you the entire uh easter bundle mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think that we have a graphic of that i want to show you this thing it includes the thing I just now showed you guys, it also includes my daily transformation, um, which is it's a big coffee table book. And if you open it up, you can open it up to any specific day of the year. And it has a word and it has a scriptures and it has a pro and it has a prophetic declaration on there. Guys, I have a, I have a whole CD set in there for my Easter experience. And there's a bunch of other uh, fun things in there as well. So I'll send you that entire package. If you want to help us with a gift of $1,000 more, I know that everybody can't do that, but I also know that there are some people who can. And Brother Allen, one of the things that, that I like to tell people is this. I sow into saving kids all over the planet Earth because I want to be able to say on my day of trouble with my kids and my grandkids, I have sown into this. Yeah. This is something I have faithfully served the Lord and I brought the kingdom into. Is there anything more worthy at this time when we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, of his love? to sacrificially give himself to save us, that we should sacrificially give to save the lives of some of the most innocent around the world. And all we need is Gideon's 300 to give $1,000. I'll be, I, I want to be one. I want to sow into this and see this supernatural miracle take place. Let's be a part of a miracle supernaturally to rescue men and women on the other side of the planet. It's astounding what you're doing. We're excited to be a part of it. And the fact that you would add to it 
we don't need anything to get back from you in order to sow, but that you would add this kind of end time prophetic survival kit, which is what it looks like, is just amazing. So thank you guys for putting all of that together so that yep. when we sow, we're actually being fed at the same time. Yeah, yesterday, just just while we were live, we had almost ten thousand dollars in giving yesterday towards Come this on. thing. And I don't I don't mind sharing that with anybody because guys, we still got a long row to hoe, and that's on top of everything else we're doing. And guys, we're doing a lot. And so we didn't have a budget for this. We didn't have, we weren't planning on this happening, but these people were not planning on being kidnapped either. And I don't know. I'm sure there is another ministry in the world that this is what they do, but I don't know who they are, and we have the ability to do that. And Brother Allen, since I spoke last year at Washington, D.C., and when I went to speak to Congress, I got connected with some next-level secret squirrel guys, and we're doing things all over the world that we've always wanted to do, but we didn't have the expertise or the manpower uh, to know how to do it. And now, brother, we're able to do it. And Jesus has brought that to us. So let's use it. And let's free these. These are Christian people who have been kidnapped by Islamic terrorists. And um, if we're not coming, I don't know that anybody else in the world is. They're right now. They're praying. They're praying yep. for deliverance. That's right. Let's, let's be the answer to their prayer. And all of these supernatural connections that you've yes. made amount to nothing if we can't pay for it, if That's we right. can't fund it. And so I'm thrilled to hear that you're doing this. I'm thrilled to partner with it. I wonder how many in the comments say, yes, I'm going to do something to help, because I can tell you how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost every single person watching this right now obeying the Holy Spirit. That's what it's going to cost. And if every single person wow. does something in obedience to the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to accomplish this and exceeding abundantly above all. Amen. We can ask or think. Wow. Well, you know what, guys? You can do that by going to odx.tv, and you can just give there, or you can call us at 877-413-0888. Again, it's 877-413-0888. And thank you so much, Pastor Allen, man. I appreciate you doing that. I'm your good friend. You know what, Pastor Allen? I'm also going to send you one of my Hard Rock Johannesburg hats. How about that? Because I picked I'll take up a it. couple of those. Yeah, I figured you would, man. It's a cool hat. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, man, let's talk about your book, because let me tell you, I took your book with me to Africa. I read your book and I had read it before. Um, I, I don't know. There's something really different. Well, let me just say this. The timing was really right this time mm. for me to for me to read your book. I read it electronically whenever you was putting this thing out. I made fun of you yesterday and which I know you're shocked. But uh, it's like <laughs> you put you put number one, you got Rick Renner to do the Ford on it, which that is a wow. Yeah. That is a tremendous wow. And um, but you also asked me to endorse it, right? Which is yeah. kind of crazy. I took Which a risk. Which is crazy. I know you took a big risk. <laughs> Praise God, there there wasn't any scandal between then and now. So that's <laughs> that's really good. And so yeah, man, I, I did that. And so I obviously read it. I looked through it. I was I stole some of your stuff and uh I I, I laughed about that yesterday as well. But man, when I read this thing. I was I was in the house in Uganda and I stayed up. I just planned on, you know, reading it, reading about 30 or 40 minutes. I actually spent about two hours and went through the entire thing and just marked it all up. Wow. I shared it with one of my African pastor friends and was showing this, showing that, because we were talking about AI. We were talking about uh we were talking about Nephilim. We were talking about the global agenda. We were going through all these things. And he just kept reading it, kept reading it, and kept reading it. And finally I just gave it to him. So it was all marked up. It was all highlighted. I had notes all over it, but he's like, really, you're going to give me out? Yeah, I'm going to give you this book. And so I gave away your book. You need to know that. So I'm, I'm going to have to get another one, but man, it's a great book. Oh, thank you. Thank Why you. Why did you name it? Why did you name it this? Well, I had seen an interview with Elon Musk and he was, he was asked about artificial intelligence. And he said, with AI, these are his words, we are summoning the demon. And he then compared it to a movie, you know, where some guy draws a pentagram on the floor and he's summoning a demon thinking he's going to control it, and it's not going to work out really well for him, that he's not going to control the demon, the demon's going to overpower him. And this is the existential threat we're dealing with, with artificial intelligence. And when he said that, something just exploded in my spirit. So I, I realized that the body of Christ needs to understand this. This is the most pivotal civilizational moment that we've ever been in in the world. This is bigger than the Industrial Revolution. This is bigger than the invention of the internet. It's bigger than the Manhattan Project and the development of the nuclear bomb and its effect on humanity. And we need to know how to navigate this. So as I dug into it, it's interesting how it led me down this rabbit trail from 
AI to transhumanism, to Nephilim, to aliens, to the Antichrist agenda and the global elites and all of the conspiracies that are out there right now. And and as I as I kind of tried to navigate through it all, people go to really far extremes to the point that they detach from the Word of God to try to understand what's happening in the world. So my intention behind this is to take all of the, the radical things that are going on and just anchor it now to the Word of God. So that's the purpose of the book. Well, I think you pulled it off. And, and no, thank you. Um, once I started going through there, I was like, you know what? The message is very clear. And I mean, what, to me, you know, number one, a, a title of a book, Summoning the Demon. And then what is your subtitle? It's AI, AI Nephilim. Aliens and the Antichrist. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't get near enough hate mail. So you decided just to stir it up a little bit. Yeah, and, it's uh, been wild. It's radical. This is a rat, But as we see what they're talking about in the Department of Defense, as we see these congressional hearings, and what's happening in the news? We realize we can't we can't laugh these things off any longer. Mm-hmm. We have to have a okay. serious answer for okay, these when things you were, scripturally. When you were talking about the congressional hearings, what what specific congressional hearing are you referring to? Well, specifically in reference to non-human origin mm-hmm. technology and entities of non-human origin, interdimensional beings mm-hmm. that there are now congressional hearings. Actually, in the appendix of the book, I have these hearings, these testimonies word for word for people to go through and read what's being testified to before Congress. It, it's mm-hmm. And it's baffling. It's like you're reading uh, The Outer Limits or something whenever, you, whenever you're reading through this. And it's actually happening. These, these, whether you believe in it or not, there are global elites out there who believe in it. They're talking about it in Congress. They're talking about it in the DOD. And we better know what they're saying because they're going to start making policy along these lines. That's right. Okay. Well, listen, I, I know a little bit about that because the day that that guy was testifying to Congress, a guy that's in the CIA, I'm trying to think what his name is. Rush. Do you remember what his name is? Yeah, it's Rush. Rush. That, is, that, um, that is his name. And that's a prophetic name. It means acceleration. So this whole thing is vamping up. This whole thing is speeding up. The day that I was there testifying to Congress on one end of the building, he was on the other end of the building. So our our event, um, the the whole summit against human trafficking was not covered at all very conveniently wow. uh because everybody was covering i mean i couldn't find nothing i couldn't find nothing on the internet about it i mean we spent two days testifying to congress and there was nothing there was nothing about it about us talking about sexual trafficking what's happening at the border how that the border is open on purpose why do we not um, um enforce the laws against pornography and against um illegal trafficking into this nation why are we i mean we we hammered it man for two full days and all you could see was crickets across the media but this dude was on there, and I actually ran into that guy in the hall. As I was coming down the hall, we actually passed each other, and I was like, that's the alien guy right there, right on. So, I, you know, I've actually I, – I was there in the building on the day that he was actually testifying to Congress. How about and that? The, and the two things are not uh, unconnected. When we're talking about these, this, these craft, UAPs, and we're talking about human trafficking – from testimony from people in in high levels of the military and some of these really deep into um, special operations. They're saying there is human trafficking taking place with this reverse engineer potentially technology that's being utilized to accomplish it and for what purpose uh, one can only imagine. But it's interesting that those two things were happening at the same time because they're they're interrelated. So... The point of your book is to say we, the church needs to know how to answer this. Yes. So if it's in the headlines that um, aliens are real, if it's in the headlines and if it is a present reality that or at least there is something presenting itself as an alien or whatever that is, right? If, if there is a headline that a Nephilim is very real, that there is a very real DNA agenda, a globalist agenda, that if you can go transsexual, you can go transhuman, and you can be transgressed against God Almighty and be of a bloodline, with the hope of this is to create a bloodline that is no longer redeemable, which I believe is exactly what the mark of the beast is going to do to human beings, is make human beings completely unredeemable. We know that when you receive the mark, you are no longer redeemable. And I think that's because it changes the very DNA of human beings from the seed of Adam to the seed of something else. And I think that now that I've said all that, what, how should the church respond to this? What is the response to the church? 
Well, as I, when I release this book, it's fascinating the number of people who buy it for their friends and family who aren't believers but are who are interested in either AI, artificial intelligence, or they're interested in aliens or UAPs, UFOs, because there's a gospel presentation consistently throughout the book for those people. So one of the reasons why we need to be interested in this is because the world is. And we have a more interesting narrative. I think the world has been lying well, and we've been telling the truth badly. Our story, the biblical narrative, is far so more good. fascinating than anything the X-Files has ever put out. Our, our story from Genesis chapter 6 all the way through Daniel chapter 2 into Revelation chapter 13, it's a far more interesting narrative than anything J.J. Uh, uh, Abrams has ever put out. Mm -hmm. And so we need to quit acting like we don't have an interesting story. The truth of the matter is there are interdimensional beings. Again, it's very interesting that they've changed the terminology from aliens and extraterrestrial to non-human or interdimensional because yes. that is entirely biblical. We have no evidence of, of anything coming from outside of our system into this system, um, but we do have a lot of evidence of, of beings in Scripture who are non-human, um, non-terrestrial, interdimensional beings who are attempting to engage with humanity in very nefarious ways. And so I walk through, there's one of the chapters in the book where I walk through close encounters or demon possession, and I compare actual incidents of close encounters with aliens with the signs of demon possessions, and the similarities are mm -hmm. startling. And so that's I why we need, to, we, need to, we need to speak up about these things, because uh, people are going to be deceived by it if we don't tell them what the Bible actually says. Well, I tell you what, not me. Uh, I, you know, I was asked by, uh, some knucklehead in Seattle. I can't think of what his name is, but, um, that's not narrowing direct? it down in Seattle, brother. A yeah, knucklehead well, in yeah Seattle. exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I was asked by some knucklehead in Seattle. He asked me, he said, uh, we got ready to do this, uh, interview. It's actually one of my favorite interviews I've ever had. I have jet lag. What's, what's his name? Yeah. Pastor Darren Stott. I'm so sorry. I'm a very good friend of his, but I got, I have jet lag right now. And so, um, Darren, stop. We sit down in front of this big crowd of people. And I, I thought I thought we were going to talk, you know, something, you know, that that made me look cool. Right. And so because, <laughs> you know, I've got books and I, you know, I got my act together sometimes. And so we sit down. We're in a huge we're in front of a huge crowd of people. We're on the stage. And he turns to me and he says, aliens, tell me about aliens. And this is like five years ago. And I was like, really? He said, yeah. And I said, well, buckle your seatbelt. If you want to go there, I'm going to go there. And the thing that I told him was this. I said, you know, I don't think that the issue is whether there's aliens or if there's not aliens. I think that the issue is if something is manifest, whatever it is, is it of God's camp or is it not of God's camp? Mm. No matter what it is. If you see something in the woods, if you see uh, something in the closet, if you find something under the bed, you see something on the rooftop, if you see something flying across the sky, the, the issue is, is it part of God's camp or is it not part of God's camp? And we definitely have the gospel of Jesus Christ that tells us how to stand with God when it is God and how to not stand or how to stand against something when it's not God. And I have never one time in my life have I heard of anyone being abducted or harassed or uh, messed with or molested by any kind of alien or transdimensional being if they said, I rebuke you in the name of King Jesus. That's right. Yeah, across, this is interesting in my research, cross culture, cross denominations, cross religions, one of the distinguishing factors of Holy Spirit-filled believers is that they don't have these experiences, and if they do, they end rapidly the moment the name of Jesus is mentioned. And, and additionally, these entities, when they show up, they've traveled, you know, apparently millions of light years to tell us that Jesus was wrong. That's their one singular yeah. message. And yeah. so it's what a great it's, message that is. It's just they've overplayed their hand. Yes, they have. And I think the body of Christ is waking up. There are more people for the first time in the history of the United States, more people in America believe in aliens than believe in God. So this this is why we've so so the enemy is going to use that right he's gonna he's gonna show up as an angel of light to give birth to and rise to all these alien religions many of which already exist this includes uh, evolution atheism uh, but there'll be many more that rise in the coming years and particularly with the eclipse I don't know if we I've mentioned this to you when I was talking with you about the eclipse but traditionally around an eclipse there That's is right. an explosion of these sightings and experiences around that time yep. 
That is exactly right, my friend. And, you know, here in during this time right now, we need to be looking up and we need to be looking for the imminent and the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ and not be side railed by the lies of these deceiving spirits that are being made manifest today with these tremendous uh, global agendas that includes uh, it includes a, a, an up and coming Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell you what, I'm not going to be a part of that camp. Yeah, Project Blue Beam. There's a whole chapter in the book on Project Blue Beam, not just Project Blue Book, but Blue Beam, right. uh, yep. which is a conspiracy theory. Again, we're running out of conspiracy theories at the rate they're coming coming true, uh, which says that the global elites will use advanced technology to simulate either an Armageddon, a messianic coming, or an alien invasion in order mm -hmm. to galvanize humanity under one world religion, one world government, one language, one currency. And uh, I think I don't think there's any doubt that they're working on with the technology is now in existence and they're working on deploying it now. Wow. You know what? I wonder what they're going to do with the rapture of the church. You know, I wonder what they're going to do with that. You yeah, can imagine, no you can imagine what they'll do with that. So I, you know what guys, my hope is in, is in the return of the Lord and I'm not scared of any of those things. You know, we actually, you know, I go bear hunting every year in uh, Northern Canada. And when I go up there, one of the things that we talk about is we talk about, hey, if we come across something blurry in the woods, what are you going to do? <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, stop in the name of Jesus. And as soon as it freezes, I'm going to blast him. <laughs> and I'm taking it to the taxidermist. And I'm going to do exactly what I would do with Goliath of Gath. I'm taking his head clean off, and I'm going to have it stuffed, and I'm going to put it next to my buffalo head inside my dadgum living room. I'm not going to live in fear of these things that I don't, I don't understand how all of that works. Here's what I do understand. Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is resurrected from the dead. And uh, there is a narrative, a biblical narrative, that this has always been going on. It continues to to go on so much so that the last army that rises up against Israel is like an orc army. It's like a hybrid. Yes. It's, it's this crazy army, and everybody just kind of dismisses it and thinks that it's a metaphor somehow. And then they also think that when the bottomless pit is opened up, and whenever these beings come up out of the ground mm -hmm. and they start going after and tormenting those who have received the mark, they go, "Well, they're really not. They're really not hybrids. They're really not this or whatever." No. It, no, you can take it literally. Literally, it's it's real and it's happening. And so the people at CERN believe this. They yes. believe this, and they believe that they can open a door. And so the body of Jesus is slowly catching up. And I want to tell you, man, your book is very instrumental in helping us do that. So I want to say thank you, brother. Well, well thank you for being a Davidic anointing uh, for this generation. Because when we start to broach these issues, I often think of the children of Israel when they encountered Goliath. For many of them. As they cowered in fear, that was their first experience, first revelation of Nephilim. Mm -hmm. They had never seen anything like that, never yep. heard of anything like that, even though it may have been talked about in the distance. Now they're facing it down, and they're cowering in fear, but there was somebody else who had a Davidic anointing who, when they saw that, something rose up within them that said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And they recognized, mm -hmm. I was born into the kingdom for such a time as this. And that's what I want the book to do, that when you go through it, you will not leave this book fearful. Something's going to rise up in you, and you're going to realize that you have an anointing. As much power and, and interesting things are going on in the enemy's camp, you have a greater power and a greater anointing. And uh, I think you're going to, you're going to, chew on lightning and spit thunder uh, whenever you get a hold of the book. I agree. I've read it. I've actually read it twice. It's a great book, and it's it got me thinking about so many things. And so, hey, listen, it's time for us to go behind the veil, and we're actually a few minutes past that. So I want to say yesterday I saw, uh, Pastor Allen, that you had signed some books for me. Yes. And uh, I, think, I, think, I think we have five of those books. Is that correct, Miss Connie? Yes. Yeah, so we have five of those books that signed. And here's the deal, guys. I want to throw this out there and tell you this. If there is if there is anybody there that you want to give, if you if you're going to be receiving that resurrection package um, from us that has all of those things. It has it has three of my books in there. It's got a full uh, DVD set in there. It's got a CD set in it, and it also has our new play and pray game in it. Um, you have those things that has a communion elements, it's got anointing oil, just some a free gift I want to give to you if you will give to us a thousand dollars or more towards helping us save these boys and girls out of sexual trafficking. You know what? I'll also throw in the first five people, I will throw in uh Alan's book that has his signature. And Alan, 
I, I'm sure you don't mind this, but I went ahead and signed it too. Now, please, I didn't write it, but I just went ahead and signed it. I signed did it next to my it? endorsement. I was going to say, did you sign it on the very first page? <laughs> as soon as you open the book, Troy Brewer, how this works That's out. Exa- that is no, no lie. It is no lie. When, when you open up his book, you open it up. The first page is me on there. You must and have so, paid yes. the publisher or something. Said, yeah, put me on there. <laughs> hey, man, Payola still works with you, man. And I, <laughs> I know I still owe you some money, but it's coming, I promise. <laughs> So, guys, if you guys want to participate, <laughs> yeah, don't hold your breath. <laughs> guys, call the number. Call 877-413-0888 and help me with this tremendous project of freeing as many as 500 children and young women uh, that are now slaves in an African country. And, guys, it is a next-level operation. It's one of the biggest – it is the biggest operation we've ever been a part of. Most of the kids that we rescue are single kids. Uh, sometimes we've rescued 20 or 30 at a time, but never 500. And this this opportunity came to me while I was in Africa. I, I know exactly what's going on over there, and it is horrific. And we have a chance to rescue people that are that are literal slaves. So, uh, guys, just simply call 877-413-0888, or you can go to odx.tv. Friends, I'm going to go straight over to Behind the Veil. And we're going to move over there. So for all my friends that are watching across all of our social media platforms, we're about to finish the feed to you. And then we're going to remain for everybody that is on ODX.TV. I have to remind everybody, guys, that I'm going to be preaching at Open Door Church tonight. I'm believing I'm still going to be awake. Hallelujah. In the name of King Jesus. But it'll be good. That's going to be tonight. And then uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be in Ohio with Pastor Rod Parsley, and I'm going to be with his amazing team of people. And then I will I will be back here in time for church for our Resurrection Sunday experience at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. Come out and be a part of that. So, Pastor Allen, will you hang on here for me, buddy? Looking forward to it. Okay, guys, let's go.